the minister and his spouse, distinguished mayor of Jerusalem and his, and his spouse, friends. It's a big honor for me to be at the opening of this memorial of the residents and the defendants of Leningrad. We're opening this memorial at a very special date for both of our countries and our people. On the 27th of January 1945, one of the most dramatic and uh, um, chapters of our history has finished. The blockade of Leningrad ended. My colleagues already spoke about it. A year later, on 27th of January 1945, the Red Army freed the Auschwitz camp, which has become the International Day to remember the victims of Holocaust. Yeah, this was three years ago. History does know a, his, a, a tragedy of such measurements. The blockade of Leningrad and the Holocaust cannot be compared with anything. Yeah, the Holocaust. These white supremacists in Ukraine deny it even happened, huh? The yeah. Oh, thank God we're helping Ukraine, huh? About the people that suffered has been given over. This is Vladimir Putin giving a speech three years ago. Our common fierce feelings about this. You have to understand history. About the def defending of the residents of Leningrad, their heroic deeds are known through the whole world. But no story, no diaries, no chronicles cannot show what these people actually really had to endure. My colleagues already spoke about to me. Thank God we're sending tanks to Ukraine, huh? The Germans have declared war on Ukraine again. Thank God, thank God, thank God. My father defended um, our country at the front lines of the war, and my mother was in the blockade in the land with my brother, my little girl, which indeed died as a child and is buried at the cemetery in St. Petersburg, along with thousands and thousands of others. So that was three years ago, Putin was inaugurating the Leningrad Memorial in Jerusalem, Israel. So now, do you know why Israel is not sending tanks uh, to uh, Russia? Even though the U.S. twisted their arm, uh, and they're doing that at great peril, because that could mean that the U.S. will cut them off from uh, our military arms. I don't think we will, but uh, we'll see. So let's bring it all the way up to uh, 2023. Um, uh, most of you, uh, if you if you watch the mainstream news or if you watch news in general, what was the most significant thing that you saw today? You probably saw something about some uh, five police officers beating up a guy in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the problem is, we don't look back in our history, and uh, and Russia does uh, very much so. So maybe this will help explain things. I, I'm not defending Russia's invasion of uh, Ukraine, but I do think you need the historical context. So uh, so where? Um, let me ask you this. So where today was the uh, American president? Uh, Biden, or Bidenopolis, uh, as I like to call him, Bidenopolis, where was Bidenopolis on the, uh, the anniversary of the uh, Holocaust today? Because this is it, this is, the, today's the anniversary of the Holocaust. Uh, where was any of the Western leaders? I didn't see uh, Macron in France, I didn't see uh, the Polish, I mean, in Poland, Wait till, wait till we get into the history on this, okay? Poland, where was their speech on the Holocaust today? Huh? Where was that? Uh, you know, uh, look around all the way. Where was Ger Germany? The, the people that perpetrated the Holocaust, where was their speech on the Holocaust today? The anniversary of the Holocaust, January 27th. This is Christmas Day. Or 
if, if you want Armstrong's Day, I guess it'd be uh, uh, December 7th, 1941. The destruction of Pearl Harbor, if you want to look at it that way. That's the significance of this day. Where was all the speeches today about the Holocaust? All right, so let's get into the one person in the whole world that seems to have given a speech on the Holocaust Remembrance Day, and I just want to read you the article. This is from kyivpost.com, kyivpost.com, because I had to get the, the transcript from Vladimir Putin's, the evil dictator that uh, you're led to believe, uh, uh, and this is his speech, Russian Vladimir Putin has marked Holocaust Remembrance Day once again by attempting to rewrite history and frame his own genocidal imperialistic invasion of Ukraine as a fight against neo-Nazis. So you can tell this is an anti-Putin <laughs> website, but at least they do give me his words. So uh, that's why I wanted to use an anti-Putin website to give you his words so that you could just say, okay, and, and I'm hoping they're quoting him correctly, and I'll have to check this uh, later. I, you know, I only have so much time to do this. So this is Putin's words. Forgetting the lessons of history leads to the repetition of terrible tragedies, Putin said in a statement released on Friday, February 27th, today. While ignoring all the evidence of crimes against the civilians, ethnic cleansing, and punitive actions organized by Russian forces in Ukraine, he added, see, I'm just trying to read you the, I, I, I like to get the, uh, everybody says, you don't get both sides of the story, man, you don't get both sides of the story, so I, but, but I'm just wanting to use the leftist words against them, so this is what Putin says, this is evidenced by the crimes against civilizations, ethnic cleansing, and punitive actions organized by the neo-Nazis in Ukraine, which is very true. The uh, Nazis killed, I, 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 don't, I, I don't have the exact numbers. I know it was 45 million Russians that died, but I'm not sure if that's combined Russians in Ukraine and Russia. Uh, I couldn't tell you that. Good Lord, I can only do so much research for these videos because I try to put out one a day. So Putin added, it's, it's against that evil that our soldiers are bravely fighting, and then I would add the words today. Um, so that's, that's where he's coming from. This is where the Russian perspective is coming from. So I want you to understand why 90% of the Russian people are with Putin on this. So let's just continue. So Friday is the 78th anniversary of the liberation of the ostwich dash Burkinov death camp built by Nazi Germany. In, and by the way, this took place in Poland. So consider how symbolic it is now that Poland is uh, the staging ground for a, a new German invasion of, uh, of, of, of Ukraine. It's just, it, it's, it, 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 you almost look back and you go like, okay, this only happened, what, 70 years ago or so? I can't even believe this has taken place. And it's like the whole world in 70 years, it's forgotten what happened. Of course, I guess most people from World War II are dead now. Uh, a date that has some, since become Holocaust Remembrance Day. And I wanted to, wanted to show you how uh, Jerusalem still remembers uh, the Battle of Leningrad, or Stalingrad, whichever way you want to call it. The Auschwitz Museum did not invite Russian representatives to the ceremony marking the event because of the war in Ukraine. So that tells you how Poland feels about this. They don't even want Russia to come in there and give a speech. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just unbelievable. Even though this is where it happened. It happened in Poland. Poland has... All right, all right. I'm getting a little animated. All right, sorry, sorry, sorry. Russia will need an extremely long time and very deep self-examination after this conflict in order to return to gatherings of the civilized world. Piktor Sawick. C -A -C -K -I, so we, w -I -C -K -I. a spokesman for the museum at the site of the former camp told AFP. Putin added that attempts to revise the contributions of our country to the great victory against Hitler actually equates to the justifying of crimes of Nazism and opens the way for the revival of its deadly ideology. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky marked Holocaust Remembrance Day by urging the world to unite against indifference and hatred nearly one year into Russia's invasion of his country. 
Today, as always, Ukraine honors the memory of millions of victims of the Holocaust. We know and remember that indifference kills along with hatred, Zelensky said in a video statement. Zelensky, who is of Jewish descent himself and from the predominantly Russian-speaking south of the country, did not refer directly to the Russian uh, invasion in his address. So. There you go. So let's uh, let's just remember back of what Auschwitz was, and this is going to be a rather long video. In case I mean, if you already know history and you don't want to hear about it, or it's just too horrifying to uh, think about because it is. Uh, first, I well, let's get to the quote. I want to get where's my quote? Where's my quote? Where's my quote? Thank you. Darn it! What did I do with it? All right. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because I got it. I got this. Is right. So this was the. Uh, this is the best summary of the Stalin quote because it's very true. You know, today we are worried about one man getting killed. He was beaten to death by five cops. Uh, it sounds like there may be riots all over the United States about this. And so this is what Stalin said. He says, if only one man dies of hunger, that is tragedy. But if a million die, that's only statistics. <laughs> so, and I'm not belittling this guy's death. I mean, it looked, uh, it sounded horrible, but you know, you, you can watch every single channel, CNN, MSDNC, uh, 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 whatever, Fox News. I mean, they're all going to be covering this to the max. Every freaking uh, right-wing channel, probably even Newsmax. But I, I prefer to think about um, the Holocaust Remembrance Day. So let's just read a little bit of this. I'm not sure how much I'm going to read, but this is taken from encyclopedia.ushnem.org. USH, Encyclopedia USH. So the Auschwitz can comp concentration camp was located on the outskirts of Auschwitz in Germany-occupied Poland. It was originally established in 1940 and later referred to as Auschwitz I, or the main camp. Uh, they later developed a second camp, just so you know. The Auschwitz by, by Kennel Killing Center. And, uh, and so what, what they would do is they bring in these carts of uh, Jewish and, uh, well, other nationalities. And we'll get to that in a minute. And they would cart them into these gas chambers. They'd uh, gas them and then they'd throw them into these ovens and just burn their bodies. And then I guess the, uh, the bodies, they'd sprinkle around the, the area for, to help grow crops, whatever. So this is about two miles, just in over three kilometers from the main camp. The Germans started construction of Auschwitz Birkenhof in 1941. Auschwitz three, I didn't. Well, I didn't know this. Auschwitz three, huh? I didn't know that one. So there, there was actually another, a third camp that they built in Poland. So this is news to me. I, gosh, knows. I, I tell you, sometimes you think you know your history, and then you read something. Auschwitz three or Manowicz. M-O-N-O-W-I-T-Z, Manowicz, was located near the Polish village of Manowicz, German Manowicz. So this is about four miles, approximately 6.5 kilometers from the main camp. The Germans initially established the Buna subcamp there in 1942. In 1943, it became a concentration camp. The Auschwitz camp complex also launched into numerous subcamps. The majority of these subcamps were located in the region around Auschwitz. It is estimated that the SS, uh, the Germans, let's just say Germans, okay, and the police deported at least 1.3 million people to the Auschwitz camp between 1940 and 1945. Of these deportees, approximately 1.1 million were murdered. Well, that's, that's, let's just say gassed and burned to death uh, or shot to death. And it really wasn't 1.1 million. The estimates are from 1.3, I think, to 1.7 million uh, because so many uh, names were lost in this uh, incredible um, atrocity. Uh, if, if this was hell on earth, uh, yes, it was hell on earth. And that's what we're seeing now. So the best estimates of the number of victims at Auschwitz Complex, including the killing center at Auschwitz Barkenhof, between 1940 and 1945, are Jews... Uh, well, only 1.09, well, 1,995,000 uh, nine, deported to Auschwitz, uh, 900, oh, oh only, they're saying only 960,000 died in this concentration camp. Of course, you know, there were other words uh, in, around in some in Germany. Non-Poles, -pol and you would think the Polish, <laughs> they wouldn't be supporting Germany in this war, huh? 
So non-Jewish Poles, uh, they, uh, they suffered 140,000 to 150,000 deported, and 74,000 of them died at German hands. And now the Poles are going to support the Germans against the Russians in the war? Blows my mind. I guess, uh, boy, you can just paint anything into a corner. Uh, Roma, gypsies, yeah, the gypsies, they were killed. Uh, 23,000 deported, 21,000 died. Soviet prisoners of war. 15,000 deported and died. Of course, that's nothing to the numbers at Stalingrad. I mean, the Russians, in revenge, they killed, uh, well, it was 98,000 that surrendered at the Battle of Stalingrad, Germans. And, uh, well, actually, only 5,000 survived. So the Russians got their revenge. <laughs> I mean, big freaking time, huh? Holy moly. So uh, other, and that's not in this paper. These are just out of my head. So other nationalities, 25,000 deported, 10,000, 15,000 died. So during the Holocaust, concentrate camps prisoners received tattoos. And if you recall, I mean, uh, they were using them as slave labor also. So we'll, we'll get into that. So received tattoos only at one location, Auschwitz. Boy, I have, how many movies have you seen with those tattoos where they come out and they just like, you know, they're out for revenge. Um, anyway, I'd, and boy, I'd, understandably so. I, I just hope they got their revenge. Uh, incoming prisoners were assigned a camp serial number, which was sewn to their prison uniforms. Only those prisoners selected for work were issued serial numbers. Those prisoners sent directly to the gas chambers were not registered and received no tattoos. Uh, like most German, that's what I was telling you, there are many German concentration camps. Uh, Auschwitz I was constructed for three purposes. To incarcerate real and perceived enemies of the Nazi regime and Germany occupation authorities in Poland. Remember, in Poland, Poland's fighting the war now for Germany again. That blows my mind for an indefinite period of time. To provide a supply of forced laborers for deployment in the uh, German SS-owned construction-related enterprise and later armaments and other war-related production. And by the way, this, this was brutal. I mean, I don't know if you've seen it. They had everything underground. Uh, there's a lot of videos on this, uh, a lot of movies. And, uh, and then to serve and kill small uh, targeted groups of the population whose deaths, was, whose deaths were determined by the SSS and the police authorities to be essential to the security of Nazi Germany. So in any things, if you ever said anything against the state, you were going to a concentration camp. So like some concentration camps, Auschwitz one had a gas chamber and a crematorium. View this term in the glossary, uh, initially SS engineers uh, constructed an improvised gas chamber in the basement of the prison block, block 11, later a larger permanent gas chamber. That, well, by the way, the, the German, uh, this is in the article, but it was the, all the German industry, Seagram's, how, how many of you know that name? Um, uh, a lot of the big German companies that exist today uh, were hand-in-hand -hand <coughs> fascist with the uh, German government. Uh, in actually helping to develop these gas chambers and, and, and basically automating the process of killing people. Um, so it's amazing that, that, that today they're doing extremely well, although maybe not today, I, as uh, Germany uh, is, is facing a, a difficult time here now that the United States has uh, blown up the Nord Stream pipeline. Uh, or I think it might have been the UK. We're, we're still speculating on that. Later, a larger permanent gas chamber was constructed as part of the original crematorium and in a separate building outside the prisoner command, compound. At Ostrich One, SS physicians carried out medical experiments. Boy, doesn't that sound like today? Let's carry out a medical experiment and give everybody the jab and find out what happens. Uh, that's what we did. So we're, we're going to be uh, looking at this, uh, this jab thing for quite some time. We'll see how that goes. I'm glad I didn't get it. I just had natural immunity. But in SS medical experience in the hospital, barracks block uh, 10, they conducted uh, psych pseudo-scientific research on infants. Ooh, imagine tearing apart an infant. What kind of sick human being does that? Twins and dwarfs. Uh, and performed forced sterilizations and uh, castrations of adults by these. In other words, they just cut your balls off, you know. I mean, I just want to be graphic about that. The best known of these physicians was the SS captain, Dr. Josef Mangale. So that's enough on, the, um, on that. So let's go around the world um, I, on, on things that, uh, that you might want to know other than uh, that it was Holocaust Day, which not a single Western leader uh, mentioned a damn thing about. So, um, oh, here's here, this. I, I tell you, sometimes you got to have fun. 
So according to uh, Twitter and I guess some uh, some uh, other reports that um, women are trolling for men at Home Depot uh, to, to find a guy to, to, to get a date with. Who would have thought that Home Depot would be a dating center? <laughs> I mean, I thought that was hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you know, on a personal note, uh, I was... Um, I had to cash a check, I, and, and by the way, I, I, this is just a piece of advice. My ex-wife wrote me a check because I bought her a hard drive, and uh, I, man, I lost it, and I couldn't find it. And I tell you what, because I'm a brain dead individual, you know, when you get a check, I swear, get it to the bank and cash the darn thing, whether you take cash out or, or do whatever you're going to do with it. Um, uh, and so I finally found the checks. So I figured I better get to the bank. But then I'm at the bank and I'm waiting in line and I'm looking up. Of course, they got their screen with all of their CD rates and everything else. And I thought, well, let's take a look at this thing. So they were offering a 4.5% CD for nine months. And that's actually, uh, well, considering inflation is 8 to 15%. I mean, but you got to have you got to have your powder dry. You got to have some money in cash. And a CD is basically cash. It'll mature in nine months. I'm not too worried about a thousand dollars. Uh, but um, so I was like, well, hell, I guess I'll get a CD. And then I was looking at these um, uh, uh, interest paying checking accounts at the at the credit union. I thought, man, I, I hadn't really thought about it. But I don't think I'm getting any interest on my checking account. I don't know. I only have, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in that checking account. So I figured I'd better ask on that. So anyway, I got in there and I'm talking to the guy and he goes, he says, yeah, you're in a non interest paying checking account. I said, well, when I opened the account, it might have been May of last year. I said, why didn't they put me in an interest paying checking account? He goes, I don't know. I don't know. I said, well, put me in a damn interest paying checking account, you know? And then he, I said, well, what about the savings account? He says, well, actually, you're earning less interest in the savings account than you earn in the checking account, which makes no damn sense whatsoever to me. But I said, well, hell, I take all the money and put it in the checking account, you know? So anyway, it was a hell of a day. So I got a, a $1,000 CD and I, I moved all my money into an interest paying check. And by the way, it wasn't bad. Uh, for a checking account, it's like 2.5% interest. So that's better than zero if you're going to keep your powder dry and have cash on hand. Um, so that I just wanted to throw that out as something you might want to think about. Maybe you need to visit your, and I encourage you, not a bank, credit union. But that's you, if you want to stay with a bank, you can talk to them. Uh, the next piece of news was uh, Rain of Silver. I've talked about that symbol in the past. I couldn't tell you what it is. Uh, they, uh, they're saying that they've hit uh, on their drilling um, some more silver uh, uh, veins, and, uh, and that things are looking good, so you might want to buy that ticker symbol. Maybe I'll throw that out in a future video. Um, this uh, shooting of uh, Tyrolf Jackson, uh, we'll see. That probably result in, in people burning down the cities. Thank God I don't live in a city. I, I wanted to throw this out on a personal note, another personal note. If you're dealing with um, Jackson Hewitt, uh, you got to understand that's just a franchised company. You have no recourse. It's kind of like dealing with Pfizer or getting the jab. You have no legal recourse against them uh, for the most part if they screw things up. Uh, they got me audited four times uh, before H&R uh, Block could, could fix things, and it cost me thousands of dollars, and I took the guy to court, and I think I talked about this in the past. I, they, they said I was in the wrong venue because he probably bought out the uh, magistrate. That, at that time, it wasn't a judge, and then I didn't realize that if you are in that situation, you can just appeal the case and it'll come back before a judge, but you only have a couple of weeks to do it. And I didn't appeal it within the time frame. So then they wanted me to pay for everything again. And I finally just said, you know what? I'm just going to drop it. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, we know right now the number is 88 Leopard 2 tanks. Uh, Germany is only sending, I think, 14, but uh, other nations are stepping up to the plate. Uh, Poland... Well, I think the Poland's selling, sending, selling, I guess they've developed their own tanks. So they're, they're sending theirs in. Oh, this was an interesting factoid. I thought this was uh, crazy. I, the WHO is urging the stockpiling of radiation medication. <laughs> I wonder why. Oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia today signaled that the, the end of the petrodollar is at hand. I thought that was very interesting. Uh, um Paul Pelosi, uh, the video came out, shows him opening the door. If you've been following that story, that's uh, very interesting that he actually opened the door. Um, and it looked like the video was edited, so I don't think we got all the details there. Uh, 
So I, and this was a quote from me, uh, Russia is where armies go to die. So Russia is where armies go to die. I just thought that was interesting. Uh, there's, I tell you what, man, I'm watching a lot of videos about Justin Trudeau. Uh, I don't know if he's on his way out. A lot of people are saying he's on his way out. I know one thing, he can't travel anywhere in Canada without a protest. And, uh, and, and, but the thing is, he's such a totalitarian dictator he might come in with the military or if they will support him, which it looks like they will because they, they crushed the truckers back in, uh, what, February or January, February last year. Uh, and, he, and I don't know where that support came from. Probably came from the globalists. Um, but, uh, yeah, or outside support. But anyway, he crushed them. So maybe he's just going to crush all these protests. And uh, these people think that they can, uh, without guns, they're going to be able to take down Justin Trudeau. Maybe not, but at least they're making his life miserable, huh? <laughs> Everywhere he go, they're they're giving him the they're giving him the double or the single barrel, actually, from what I understand. And uh, so I mean, you know, if you want to be a totalitarian dictator uh, asshole like he is, um, at least uh, I would think that at night he's got to wonder why does everybody hate me? Why does everybody hate me? And so, you know, anyway, so I thought that was pretty good. Uh, the next piece of news was Newsmax was Newsmax was banned from Directv. Uh, I thought that was interesting. Um, so, and uh, let's see. Uh, boy, I guess we're just about done. Anyway, the other, the last thing, and I might find it. And I I might just make another video. Uh, I was I saw this George Soros. Uh, if you, I mean, obviously you know who George Soros is. I this is I mean this guy he's. I, he's he's pure evil, man, and uh, it, and it's just amazing that he funds. I mean, I it, these riots and everything. I would I would dare say they're funded by George Soros. It's just that he he's like this evil paladin, uh, and the meme was was comparing what he looks like now because I think he, I guess evil just lives a long time. He's like ninety four years old, which is incredible. I, God knows I hope I live as a good person. At least I think I'm a good person until ninety four years old. Uh, but man, I mean, he looks just like Palatin, and, and, and it was a meme showing him and Palatin saying the evil George Soros. Uh, anyway, I thought that was funny as hell. So that's it for this video. It's good, 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 good to live in the free, free, free state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious.